Okay, um, my phone died. So let's talk about a different subject that came up this weekend. I think it was yesterday or the day before on Friday. Um, someone wrote a post and he has the same Arisha as me and he's, uh, we would say white, European looking Brazilian. And in his post, he went about saying that one of his godchildren left his Tejero. And then she said that to him that she went to a new Baba, Baba Larisha, and that um, he happens to be black or Negro, and she is a Negra, and... Um, he was offended by this, and he said that, you know, Faye now tame core, Faye doesn't have color, or Risha is a voter now tame core, and they don't have color. And this is actually not, and why I said the opposite, people called me racist. They said I was Hasista, and it's, okay, historically, historically, Condomble é de Brazil. It's from Brazil, and it was made by African slaves, escravos africanos in Brazil. Same, but escravos there, like Angola, Benin, uh, Togo, Ghana, Senegal, Nigeria, muito, muito, mais recentemente. Like, the last 200 years is when the Yoruba people really came as slaves. Before, Yoruba people sold slaves, along with the Fulani and uh, Dahomey. They sold slaves. So, a lot of the, like, most of, like, Pova the Ketu or Scrabble's Aki, sold by the Yoruba, sold by the Dahomey. So... There's been a lot of mixing in the Americas, Yoruba and Cuba, Yoruba in the United States, Yoruba in uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Yoruba in Brazil, but everywhere, to the mundo, Sao, Congo, Bantu, Primero, the Bantu people were the first people, Bantu, Bant, yeah, Bantu, Angola, Cameroon, Gabon, Congo, they were the first people to be escravos in America. It's like in con the Portuguese with the Portuguese and the Spanish. And then the Poise, the uh, Dutch, English, uh, Francais, um, French, English were got into the slavery trade. So, but even before that, there was the. Scravida uh, je je Arabi. So it's like the Arab slave trade that started in like seven hundred seticentos, like A.D. And so in like fourteen ninety two, mil quatrocentos nove um dois, the Portuguese started slaves in Angola and Congo, and so. Mayoria de escravos in Brazil, they're, they're Congo, but there's a there's like this mix between other people, but in Congo, povo africano, povo negro, in Ghana, Togo, Benin, povo africano, povo negro, Nigeria, povo. Africana povo negro. So Orisha's negro. Enkisi negro. Vodun negro. I don't understand why in Brazil they're like, oh, Orisha's south soul energy is now 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 tame core. <laughs> but energy is tame core. It's just like seem like. Oshala e Branco. Energy e de Branco. Okay. Yamaja Azul. Shango 
Vermelho. Shango is red. É, é um cor. Vermelho é um cor. <laughs> it's, it's red. Okay? Um, so, even energy is, like, energies have color. Um, so, when they say, like, I understand that everyone, everyone has the capability to be a part of this tradition. Everyone has the capability to um, have love for Orishas, have love for Vodun's, have love for Nkisi. Everyone to the Munda Pojin Practicar the Condom Black scene. But there is racism within Condom Blay. I have seen more in Condom Blay. It's the truth. Eva Daji. It's it, it is it it's like I experience it all the time. Not so much in like in Bahia, but I keep seeing in Sao Paulo e há muito racismo em Candomblé. E racismo de brancos para negros. Now negros para brancos. Okay? Like the the neg the racismo reverso and and muito novo, okay? It's new. This is like people are like, oh, when I initiated, I was the only white one, and it was hard for me. You're in a black tradition. You're in a African tradition. When I'm in Africa, I get called white. Like I literally called when I was in Africa, me shaman bronco, estrangero. Now goes to me, like in Africa. Like because I'm a light skin, I'm I'm light. I'm light skin. I'm not a black, dark African. So I understand that part. I understand that the lighter you are, sometimes you get difficulty when you're in African traditions. But here it's almost like the lighter skinned people have usurped or they have taken over the tradition and that when some of them have, when black initiates, whether it's from America or Europa or Nigeria or Caribbean or even Brasileiros, they're like, ew, você é negro, ew. Like, it's just like in Condomble. Or they treat them differently or they don't teach them as much or... They make them do harder work. It's it's very... I've seen it so many times. Not just from abroad. I've seen it here. I've seen it in my own initiation. It's... It's very... Messed up. And it's... It's... it's Hasismo that's deeply rooted... In the mind. In the subconscious. And they don't even notice it. And when someone like me talks about it, they're like, oh, você é racista, da, da, da. Like, like now, now I have racismo, é, é você, so. It's like, it's like my problem. And that's not true. It's because you don't want to see it, you don't want to talk about it, but it's still there. And it shouldn't be a problem. There, there, it shouldn't be a problem. There's all different colors of people in Condom Blay. There's all different colors of people in uh, Oshé Yeah. Um, there's different colors of people who practice Orisha. And there should be this respect level across the board. But... I just also don't like the whitewashing of the tradition where like imagines that Arisha sal broncos and it's just like how do you make Yamaja white? How do you make Ogun white? Like how do you and then they say you know, like Orisha's now tame core it's just like like, for example, with Ifa, Arumila. Arumila is described as un, as an hombre negro, um, baixo, gordo, gordinho, 
Um, now I am so bonito, but it's like it's he's not a really good looking man. He's a short um, black guy. And then you have names like like Eshu, like Omokuru Dudu Ita. It's like the black man from outside, the black man from, you know, near the forest. It's it says that he's a black man. So why do people always want to put Eshu on white people? Like they never want to put Eshu on a black guy. Like they always want to put him on white people. Inside in Sao Paulo. In Salvador, I've heard it's a little different. Or in like Manaus, I have people complain that if you're white and you want to do Eshu, sometimes they don't do it. Um so I've heard the reverse as well. But here they always want to put Eshu on white people. And I don't understand that because it's like it's even in his name that he's a black guy. But people want to say, oh, no, 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 it's just energy. It's not, no color. It, it's, like, very weird. It's very weird to me. And I think it has a lot to do with just, in Brazil, I'm American, so I'm used to racism that's more in your face. And then in Brazil, it's more subtle. It's subtle economic-wise. It's subtle in opportunities. It's subtle in just the way people treat you, they don't they don't usually say, oh, we'll say negro, lixo, like como en Estados Unidos. It's, aquí it's just like, oh, it's different. It's, 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 it's kind of subconscious. It's, it's like, it's, you treat people differently based on their skin color, but um, it's just as in, the way uh, it is in your face, like in the South, in USA. So I understand that. Um, but it still is a problem. It's a problem Luke me too. Um, and so you do see more of the hesismo reverso now because uh, black people are starting to see it. They're becoming aware of it. They're going to wake you up out of the sleep, and then they want to be with more black people in an Ile con muertos negros instead of just being the only black person in a Tejero. When I was in Miami, in a Tejero de Umbanda, I was the sole negro la, like the only black person there. And then you have... You have all these black spirits coming in possession, and you're working with all these different black spirits, and then I'm the only black one there. And so it was a little disturbing for me sometimes, and lonely, because you, when you're a black person, you have a different perspective. You have a different um, view of the world, because the world is pretty much against you. So... And it's and people like to deny that, but it doesn't matter. Even if you're in Africa, even Africans will treat you different based on your skin color. Um, they try to bleach their skin. Um, it is it, it this colonialism and this racism has been so ingrained in all over the world. It's like. And then people want to think about, oh, because you have rap stars, or you have basketball stars, or you have celebrities that are black, that it's all okay. It's okay. No, they're used for entertainment. They are puppets for entertainment. They are, their own talent is maximized for the benefit of white people. So that's not success. That is just puppets. And some of these people, yeah, they 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 volunteered to be like that, and some of them didn't. I understand that some people just want to have a good life and li- live their dream and do their um, fulfill whatever purpose they have. But it it's never we live in a racist society. If you go to China, 
people will discriminate you based on your skin color. If you go to India, you will get discriminated by your skin color. The darker you are, the you're called the the uglier people think you are. It is not, and it's in every Western co- country, and it's also in non-Western countries. It's, it's throughout Latin America. So, I mean, when people say, oh, it's only an American thing. No, it's something in the UK. It's in Australia. It's in Canada. It's in all of Latin America. Um, it's even in the Caribbean where it's, it's all black people almost. Um, it's in Asia. It's in Europe. And then it's in Australia. It's in it's in it's in Africa to a certain extent. So I don't know how people can say there's no racism or that it's only an American thing. It's just it's just the way the world is. Um, if you are born black, statistically you are more likely to experience poverty. Statistically, you're more likely to have um, a dysfunctional family. Statistically, you're more likely to have only one parent. Statistically you are more likely to be um, incarcerated or arrested. Statistically, you have a harder time both obtaining and paying for education. Statistically, you're more likely not to uh, be able to um, pay back your loans or to get a car or to get so many things. But whenever someone who is of a darker color succeeds, we, we see that as a success as if or it's a point that a racism does not exist no and in statistics there's outliers there's always people who are going to be outside of the norm especially if you're really really talented those are not the determinants of whether something exists by pointing one or two or oh i know somebody because you know one person does not mean that it's gone or that it does not happen in the world just because there is one Baba who is not racist does not mean that there's no racist Babas in Sao Paulo. Just because, you know, you haven't heard something does not mean it does not exist. So when someone brings it up, like me, that there's an issue, especially when I've gone to multiple Tejeros here, multiple Tejeros in Salvador, and then I've talked to people from all over Brazil for years, um... My opinion is valid because I'm speaking from experience. I'm not speaking from just this place of anger where I just see the whole world as as racist. No, there's racism in the whole world because of colonialism. Because of colonialism, because of imperialism, because of marketing, because of the white Western standard of beauty and education and society um technology is what's told to the world even though it's not true because most of our technology was invented by black and brown people like what i'm talking to right now on the phone is because of black and brown people and i'm talking about latinos indios like indians asians um african americans african americans in europe africans in africa these are all people who help create technology. Most people don't know that GPS, a lot of the algorithms on Facebook, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, were invented by black people. So, but it's all this, it's, a, it's, a, it's all an illusion that everything comes from white people, and it doesn't. Um, when it comes back into Condomble, they say, oh, it's Brasileiro. It's Condomble is, is a Brazilian tradition. Brazil, it came from black people in Brazil. It doesn't make it Brazilian. Cubans do the same thing. They say, oh, Santeria is Cuban. It's ours. No, Santeria came from Q- Afro-Cuban slaves. And then they let, you, they let the white people in much later. For example, like in Palo Mayombe, now Blancos, I'd say maybe like 1850, like not, not until like 1850 were white people allowed in religion. There was no white people, no white people in Palo until 1850, okay? And now it's almost all white people. And 
it's two of those Broncos and pile my own base. It's like it's just it's it's the switch, it's this reversal, and that's what people do not like to see because when you initiate a white person, when you initiate a Bronco or or Errol Pale or or someone from England or Australia. Now go now now goes to the initiar negros. Now goes to initiar povo mahon. They they initiate ultros broncos soul. They only initiate other white people, and that is the problem because once you initiate one bronco, it entire house is to the broncos. Like it just. And that's not, but why, black people don't do that. When, uh, like, a black person initiates and they become a Baba Larisha, they tame um, Ile Misturado. Pero cuando un Bronco es e un Baba Larisha, todo es Bronco. It's like, it's, it's just, it's not, you, do you understand that it's like when a white person initiates in the ATR, they make everything white, everybody's white. And but black people don't do the same thing. Even like when they get initiated, they they have they initiate Asia, the Asian people, they initiate black people, they initiate white people, they initiate everybody. But when a white person does it, it's all white. And so that is what's going on in all the traditions in Palo, Ifa, Santeria, Condom Blake, Ketu, Afon, JJ, Angola. Vodun Africano, Haitian Voodoo, uh, Afa, Mami Wato, everything. Everything is Bronco. Like, in the in the media, in TV, on magazines, in, in newspapers, entrevistas, it's all Sacerdotes Broncos. Like, for Charlie Stories Africanos, like when you go to, like like a rabbi, a Judeo, like like you expect the guy a rabbi. If you go to like a a temple, you expect a Jewish priest to be Jewish. When you go into like a Muslim or a Muslim like mosque, the Imam at Arabe now Bronco. If you go to a Hindu temple, the guy is Indian. He's not Bronco. Okay. Um, when you go to Japan for like Shinto or Buddhism, the person is Asian, not white. Like it's it's like everybody is like every religion can have a representative of their race, their culture. But when it comes to black traditions, it's like no. Now ten core, come traditional tradition stories. Africanos now ten core. Christian tame core, uh, Muslimanos tame core, uh, Buddhism tame core, like two tame core, except Yoruba. Yoruba is same core. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's like black people are not allowed to have anything of, for their own. It's like black people must give it to everyone. And it's frustrating because when you help people, I have white clients. They're very respectful of me. They support me. They encourage me. I help them. And I have no problem if they get initiated and um, they initiate other people because they're not racist. Like I I have clients in Italy and I know full well if they ever get initiated in condom blade, or an other tradition that they're going to initiate not just Italians, but other people because they're not racist. It, but there's these people who are initiating racist people and then they end up having racist houses. And I, I just don't understand. I don't get it. So it's funny. I'm having a lot of Sikh people on this, on this chat because I used to talk about the same thing about racism and Sikhism because... Um, it's this op. It was it was actually reverse racism and racism. It was like racism against black people, and then 
reverse racism against white people. But then, but then we had like three H O and the white Sikhs. They were like being racist against even Indians from which their tradition, their religion comes from. So, racism is a problem in religion. It's just no matter what religion you pick, there's, there's, there's this, um, and a lot of it is because the people of the home or host culture are just tired of the colonialism. They're tired of the culture appropriation. They're tired of people coming into the tradition, changing it, making it a white face. And then other people see that as racism or reverse racism. And it's not, it's just, they're finally getting tired of the imperialism, the colonialism, the enforced view of, of Western beauty on people to make them that goes into religion, goes into religious artwork, goes into religious figures, statues, everything is this westernized faux sense of superiority when really white people in general are the minority in the world. But in America, we're anyone who's not white is called a minority, but 70% of the world is not white. So it's just, it's just, it's funny. Even in Brazil, I think like 51 to 54% of the people in Brazil are, are black descent. Yet there's lots of racism. The same thing happened in South Africa. You had apartheid where almost everybody was black except for a small group of white folks. And they end up taking over the country and making everyone feel like they were basically animals for decades. This is the, the phenomenon that white people have done historically. And when people act like there's no racism, I'm like... Have you seen, like, it's like they don't listen to, they don't pay attention to history. They don't see what happens in other places in the world. They don't see what happens in their own country. And it's just exhausting sometimes when you're trying to educate people and then they don't get it. So the answer to all this is to just focus on the spirits, focus on the religion, focus on the energias, focus on... um his special his respect for each other respect for where these spirits come from so if you have spirits that come from africa and they're negro have respect for negros have respect from negros vivos and mortos like have respect for the cultura the culture the haiz the haiz is in africa now in brazil haiz to africa Haiz in Brazil is different. It's a it's a different. It's not even root. It's not now now in Haiz and and Hamo. It's 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 not. It's like that's the other thing. They're like Haiz, Haiz and Brazil Brasileiro. I'm like Haiz is Africano. Like it's not a it's not a. You can't take root and then pull it and put it in someone else. Like you can't replant a root. I mean, you can try. It's very hard to do. You can't. You, the root is in Africa. There's a branch in Brazil. There's a branch in Cuba. There's a branch in Trinidad and Tobago. There's a branch. You can kind of say it's becoming and stuff. No, there's not one in Estados Unidos. Just whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's just more respect for the tradition, the people, the community, the spirits, the ancestors, the ancestors Africanos, that that's what needs to be done because there's too much racism and conflict and all this stuff. And I don't understand it. I don't understand how you can have an African spirit on your head and be racist, but people are amazing sometimes when it comes to negative shit. So who knows? But yeah, that's just my little talk today. Bye.